Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and I just thought it was the perfect time to look over the box EV for Modern Masters 2017. Um, I would say this is probably an unprecedented set, but then again, I've only been playing for four years. But they've only been making X Masters for about, well, I mean, this is only really the fourth one? I have no idea what they did in 2014. But it was uh, Modern Masters 1 2013, Modern Masters 2 2015, and now 2017 Modern Masters 3 with Eternal Masters in 2016. So this expensive of a set with this many sought after cards, but at allegedly this uh, print volume, which it looks like is indeed approximately the same size as Modern Masters 2. Nobody knows when to buy anything, when to sell anything, what's going to happen. I mean, vendors got screwed over by customers canceling their orders later because the boxes were cheaper, and customers got screwed over early on because the vendors could get a better price later. What's the moral of the story? Some people are just greedy dicks. And being a greedy dick knows no position as far as buyer or seller. Anyway, I noticed that after about, boy, I would say four or five days, the prices of fetch lands across the board were creeping up 50 cents to a dollar. Now, you might think, oh, wow, it went from what, 43 to 44 dollars? What does that mean? That's nothing. For a price to go up at all on a card, whether it's standard or another product, that is huge, 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 huge. Now, a temporary one-hour fluctuation that goes up 25 cents, okay, whatever. Somebody bought the bottom ones. But with the volume of undercutting that goes on, prices just tend to go down and keep going down. If one is going back up, it's a signal that something's going to happen. The best example would probably be any kind of white human card from Eldritch Moon. White humans got super hot out of nowhere because everything's, oh, human tribal, oh, that's like allies, that's just crap. That's just garbage that, you know, wizards threw in there because people like to build easy stuff that's obvious. It's kind of like werewolves and vampires, uh, you know, it's just the blah tribal deck. And then it stuck up and kicked the crap out of everybody. So Thalia and Thalia's, and then insert word here, those went up pretty high. And as soon as I saw my whole stock, which, which is obviously not my whole stock, I mean, I, I list like 16 at a time, but at the time I saw all of them get eaten up and I thought, well, that's weird, you know, at, at $8 a set or whatever the hell those cards were, I was thinking, wow, that's, that's interesting. I guess, I don't know, some people think it's hot. So then I absolutely did not list the rest. Boom, suddenly they're 8 to 10 a card. So when you see a card start to kind of go up a little bit, 25 cents, 50 cents a dollar, it's an indication that there's not enough, that the demand is going to keep going. It looks like they're even higher now. They've crept up a little tiny bit higher, and even some of the vendors are starting to up their prices, you know, instead of just eBay and all the person-to-person -person stuff. So I plugged in the new rare prices. It looks like the uncommons didn't really change at all. Um and the new mythic prices and left the foil multiplier of 1.4 X because I don't know. I just don't feel like typing in the foil prices. I'm just lazy as hell, but it seems like 1.4 X is a pretty good blanket. In fact, I did 1.4 X on the rare 1.6 X on the uncommon and two X on the common, which I mean, a, a spell pierce is what, like 50 cents. And then a foil one's like $10. So these are a little conservative uh, across the board. Also, I mean, come on, like a foil path, that's at least 1.6x. Although the promos didn't do it any favors, that's a bad example. So uh, before I give the total, which is very, very surprising to me, by the way, watch till the end, big surprise, woo, clickbait. Actually, at this point, I think it's watch bait, but anyway, um, the average mythic is $20.62. The average rare is, believe it or not, $5.64. Yeah, a little lower than you might think. Um, but the rare slot average between the two is $7.50 right on the dot. So without consideration of the foil and not counting any of the commons or uncommons at all, you're looking at $7.50 a pack. So if all you care about is the, vo the value of the rare slot, although if you're ignoring the foil slot, you're a crazy person, um, not the best, I guess, but once you do add in the foil, it's pretty good. Now, the... Average uncommon is about 50 to 58 cents, depending upon whose prices you use. Um, there's only a couple of huge winners there. I mean, like four or five of them. Uh, the rest are $1.75 on down. 
Uh, so uncommon per pack though, I put at about a dollar seventy four because you know you're gonna get three of them. So you're already at very close to the MSRP without even considering the foil. Now the commons, here's the thing that's really wild. The commons are still two twenty five. They always have been and they always will be. I literally just did twenty five cents times nine. I mean, I'm sure there's a, a thirty five cent and a fifty cent one out there. Who cares? Won't throw it off that much. So a lot of people don't consider that in the cost of the uh, box. So I'll do it either way, but just keep in mind you got another 225 there. I mean, would people even buy list it that way? Probably not. A nickel if you're lucky, but it is value. Hey, some people trade for spell pierces. I'm just saying. Oh, and uh, that that red green guy, the burning tree, he's pretty hot too. So. The non-foil pack value right now, just with all of those considered, is $11.48 without the foil. Now, here's the thing. The foil slot is worth an average of $3.27, and that is half-weighted for Mythics, as it should be, and considers you know the probability of it being a rare Mythic, Uncommon, or a Common. So, cumulatively, across the board, with the multipliers I stated, $3.27. So, you're looking at a combined total pack EV of fourteen seventy five, and that is right now today, March twenty sixth. So you multiply that by twenty four, and you get three hundred and fifty four dollars and eight cents. Holy crap! So it is still uh, profitable to open a box. Now I have seen people open both personally and on YouTube um six hundred to six hundred and fifty dollar boxes, and uh, Big D unfortunately, <laughs> God I feel bad about this. He got a about a 25 to $30 box. Yeah. The way he described it was one $20 card and nothing. I'm sure if you added up literally every card, he probably had like 60 bucks or something. I don't know, but ooh. So just keep in mind, you can get kicked in the nuts hard on this set. Although the sheer probability, the like the whole Sigma level distribution of this and that, you know, the hit or miss probability and the the uh, standard deviation and the variance is really what you're getting at very 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 low compared to other sets like this i mean i would dare say what like a third of the well about about half the mythics and about a third of the rares are very worthwhile uh maybe a quarter of the rares if you want to go 20 bucks and up because there's a 750 and a five dollar below that so, okay, that's not that great, but it's not that bad. I mean, especially with, you know, you might pull a 7 a 6 and a $3 uncommon. Probably not, but you never know. And then, you know, yeah, in the foil, and it's like, oh, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do all right on the whole, especially at a, a quantity of 24. So would I still open a box today? Absolutely. So for those of you common haters out there, um... Let's redo the spreadsheet real quick. Not really redo it, but um, take out the commons. Well, real simple, $300.08 is the final box EV without any commons but considering foil commons. Also, the average foil common was um, $0.50. Cents. In fact, all of them were $0.50 cents on the spreadsheet. So still, I mean, if you can get a box for 200 to 250 even, you know, well, 250 God, I wouldn't pay that now. Um, but there's not that many boxes floating around. Then again, let's check the eBay price on a box in a case. Okay. I cannot believe this. Seriously. I cannot believe this. One person has a box or a case, I should say, which is four boxes, um, for 770 free shipping Buy it now. So, I mean, 770, let's divide this here. Probably should. Okay. 192.50 per box. Uh, that's not bad. It didn't really fall a whole lot lower than that at any point. And then you look to the next ones. Okay. Seven, seven, seven. Ha ha ha. Funny. Um, seven, eighty, seven, eighty five, seven, ninety, seven, ninety five. And then it jumps right up to like eight twenty. So I would expect that. Yeah. Supplies are drying up. I guess maybe some people are just like, Oh crap. I couldn't move this locally. And they just throw up one or two or three on, uh, eBay. Um, so it looks like we're going to be hitting, you know, 800 plus per case in a very short amount of time. So if you were thinking about picking one up pretty much anywhere, yeah, do it. You've probably got less than a week. Now it looks like per box, we're looking at, uh, kind of roughly the same price ish. Um, 191, 192, 193, 194, 195. I'm just scrolling down. It's almost exactly everybody's undercutting each other by a dollar because we're all a bunch of, what do, you, what do you call that? Like ravenous, cold-blooded backstabbers. 
Welcome to eBay. We all hate each other. That should be on one of their advertisements. There is one very slight catch to me telling you to buy boxes right now. Because, I mean, if nothing changes, if there's no second wave, which just gave it away then, um, the boxes are going to float back up to 800 plus, or the cases, um, very, 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 very soon. I mean, that's still 200 a box. Like, that's 40 below MSRP. That's not, like, the biggest deal in the world. But if you want the biggest deal in the world, I would buy them right now. Now, that said, I heard a rumor from a very reliable source, uh, and I'm going to confirm it in person Monday morning at approximately 8.01 via phone, because that's how I roll. Um, there might be a second shipment of Modern Masters that has already hit the distributors either on Friday, and I didn't hear about it, or Saturday, and they weren't open, or like some kind of weird Sunday delivery, like some kind of semi-private freight, I don't know. It actually would be weird if they sent these like FedEx. That can't possibly be cost effective. So allegedly, I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who says that the distributors got in more boxes. Now, when they say second wave, there's two types of second waves. This is the way I understand it. A lot of people have told me this. So this is kind of news to me, though. Um, there's OK Wizards is sending more to the distributors because Wizards was going to ship it directly to some people, but some of them, you know, burned their store down, died, went out of business or canceled the order for God knows what reason, or oh, their payment method bounced. Well, I suppose the check bouncer and net 30. Okay, whatever. But if their credit card didn't run on day one, whoopsies. Now I have no idea if that's even how they take uh payment. I have no idea. I heard it's all net 30 across the board, but you know, not everybody has my credit rating. So <laughs> maybe not everyone. FYI, I don't even get net 30 at my distributor. My credit score is like in the 800s. But Dennis, I thought you said you're poor. Yeah, there's a difference between being poor and being an irresponsible idiot. No offense to the people with a credit score of 500. Just kidding, much offense, you're an idiot. Well, okay, unless you have like medical expenses and add cancer. So if this is wave two and it's 1% the size of the first wave and it's just like, oh God, who are we even going to send this to? Every store in America is going to get like one box or two or, you know, one case or something stupid. And it's barely going to affect anything. I mean, it, it would be such a pittance compared to the first wave. It might drive down prices of boxes for like three or four days. And we're talking on the order of five or ten bucks tops. Now, there's the whole, you know, secondary investment, super fast reactive market, which is how many are they sending? Is there a second print wave? Is there a giant shipment? what's going on and that just tanks the prices of the boxes or lets them keep rising and then there's the actual demand for the singles which is also a pusher of it but much 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 slower i mean it's arguably instantaneous but it's still just slower in general because somebody has to decide that they want the card so i think right now people are saying oh well that's as low as the fetch lands are gonna get you know the price hasn't really changed oh look it's creeping up by a couple quarters every couple days um, I'm going to buy them now. And then everybody has that mentality because everybody wants to buy at the lowest point, obviously. So I think, yes, we're seeing an upswing. If nothing changes, we're going to see an upswing like crazy. I mean, we're talking singles going through the roof, like not like double in price, but you could look at some of them that are kind of drying up going up, you know, 10, 20, 30% easy. So if that continues to drive it up, that'll offset a second shipment that's significant in size. Let's say it's 50% the size of the first one, which would be like devastating to the supply. I mean, you'd be getting boxes for probably 165, 175 around there. It's still profitable, but then, uh, you know, the people who are on the fence are like, oh, now it dropped another five bucks for a scalding tarn. Okay, now I'm really going to pick one up. There are certain cards that people have been wanting for the last two years. Just keep that in mind or more. I mean, they're like, oh, I wish I could finish my, my modern deck or my, you know, commander deck and I've got the card proxied or... Uh, I borrow it from my friends or I've got, you know, four cards split between two decks or just whatever. I should say shared between two decks. I really want to pick these up and they've been on my, you know, wish list forever, but I'm not paying 200 bucks. Maybe I'll pay 100 bucks. So as soon as they hit 25 bucks, boom, they, t they pick them up. So you've had, instead of it's just like, oh, I hope standard is good and trying to manufacture this whole demand out of literally nothing because the cards have never been seen before. This is a reprint set. People have been waiting for these cards, especially these specific cards. So that really adds to it quite a bit. 
once people start kicking into that fear of missing out instinct where it's like, oh crap, the cards are going back up and they're never going to be this price again, you know, at least not for two years, probably, um, they're going to pounce, you know, they'll even pay three bucks more than, than they were originally going to because they're going to miss out because the card's going to skyrocket. You know, it's not going to go back to original price, but it may, might make it halfway there. You never know. I mean, you might be seeing $100 Tarmogoyfs. In fact, I believe Card Kingdom has the regular Tarmogoyfs at 90 already, and I do believe they had them at 60 originally. Might have been 80 but still, you know, it's going up. Up is up. So if you hear anything early Monday or Tuesday about a second shipment, and it's legit, which, and, I mean, duh, hit the subscribe button on my channel, guarantee you'll hear about it. I think people would be fighting over these boxes, and, um... The investors probably didn't, well, I mean, they tried to get the first wave, but they didn't get what they wanted, like the people who hold like 500 boxes. Um, so the second wave, they're going to attack it just as viciously. Like everybody's going to overorder and they won't be enough to go around. You know, either to, you know, open for the single sellers because they're still profitable or to sell sealed because it's still profitable or to go into somebody's vault and basement and closet and whatever because allegedly the second wave is always cheaper than the first one and nobody got what they wanted in the first one. So don't think it's the end of the world price wise and value wise. If there is another wave, if it's the same size as wave one, okay, we're going to see some dips. And then if they do like a third wave, the same size, okay, that's when I would start worrying. That might be a little bit much for the market to soak up, but for the time being, even if they announce a major, major, massive second wave, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because I don't think it's going to hit the market as hard as you think. So my overall advice is, uh, pick the cases up right now. Pick, pick it, the, pick it, the cases up right now. I'm, I'm Italian. That actually sounded like Miss Swan from Mad TV. No, the guy who delivered my boxes, he looked like a man. Speaking of that, they actually changed to, um, UPS from FedEx for some reason at my distributor. And because UPS is such complete garbage, they just shipped them out a day early so that I wouldn't get them a day late, which is why I got them a day earlier than one day early. Also known as two days early, if you're good at math. It's like 1am. I don't even know what I'm talking about at this point. You should probably just stop listening right now. But um, if you think 192, 191 a box is a good price, pick it up right now because, you know, what are the odds it'll honestly go lower? Pretty damn low. Uh, but you might want to wait. You might be able to save yourself three, four dollars or something if there is a giant print run that's going on right now or shipment, I should say. If they're printing it right now, that'd be a little late. But um, yeah, if there's a second wave shipping out right now and it just arrived right about now, um, you could save a couple dollars, but, um, I'd be more concerned about missing out and having to pay eight twenty a case instead. So that's my market summary and outlook for the time being. And, um, in case you're not paying attention to my channel, I'm about 10 times as accurate as anybody else. That's a massive exaggeration, but I do have pretty much everybody beat on predictions. I have a long track record of being able to tell what's going to happen with the market, probably because I'm more in it than most YouTubers. Keep in mind, I sell, well... If you look at 2016 around $100,000 worth of cards per year so yeah oh and I could pick up the phone and just call my distributor and see what's going on plus I got contacts everywhere so kind of better than blind speculation based on solely results it helps to have inside information most importantly this is the most important thing in the history of eBay and shipping uh I got two epic cat t-shirts coming in the mail very shortly they finally landed in America that only took about 30 days so I'll do it. I'll, I'll, I'll get on camera finally. I don't know why the hell you guys want to look at me doing one of these in one take in a cat shirt in front of a camera with my awesome new backdrop. I can't imagine what the motivation there is, but I'll do it just to show off the damn shirts because they're freaking awesome. In fact, I'll change them halfway through and see if anybody notices. So that's the best news out of any of this because uh, cat shirts are awesome. And uh, watch... In one, two, three, four, five, six days, I'll be giving away another, uh, what the hell did I name this damn thing? I gotta write this on my hand or something. The Desolator Magic Mega Monthly, Ma did I say magic already? Something box giveaway. I put a bunch of random crap from my shop in a box and mail it to your house. Oh, but only one person. This is not the monthly magic box. Screw those people. So watch for that. Uh, another good reason to hit the sub button. Just saying. Just throwing it out there. It's, it's just logic. Or you could, uh, you know, just miss out. Just miss out, out on the entry window. You know, just saying. So you guys have a lovely remainder of the weekend. Go catch some Pokemon outside. And I'll see you guys next video. Guys.